Well, hello everybody, it's Carrie's Corner and I am going to be chatting today to one of the other loves of my life, Carl Lamboa, who is the general manager at Takara Winery and they have walked away with five platter five stars this year, which is nothing to be sneezed at. So aside from that, we're going to catch up and shoot the breeze, but we're going to congratulate him for this amazing accolade that he's received for his wines. Carl, hi and welcome to Carrie's Corner. Thank you very much. Lovely to be talking to you again. I know, and it is time for us to catch up and shoot the breeze and chatter and natter and what have you. First of all, congratulations. That is a massive achievement. Five stars. You and your team must be absolutely over the moon. No, we are. We are incredibly proud. It's uh, it's uh, how how would you actually put it? You know, we we look at the platter wine guide as pretty much the the measure that you need to be able to stand up and be tall and proud um, at the end of a year. And yes. uh, it's always the one that you go, oh, man, I wonder what we're getting. I wonder what we're getting. You know, you're chomping at the bit. And then <laughs> um, the release, again, was very unusual this year. We just got a letter saying, oh, well done, you did this, where usually there's a lot of fanfare. So we weren't expecting it. Yes. And, but when it came, it was, wow. It, it takes the... Well, it actually probably puts wind in your sails. And that's yes. Like your, yeah. It's, well, it's let's an tell everybody, we, you got for both of your flagship blends, your Takara Directors Reserve Red and White 2018. You got for your Reserve Collection Cab 2018, your Reserve Collection Elgin Sauvignon Blanc 2020, and, of course, the Pot Still Brandy. How could we ever forget that Pot Still Brandy? We love it, and it's coming Christmas time, and it's going to be on everybody's table, I hope. Oh, so too. So the Potsdell brandy is an interesting one. It's the first five star that we've achieved for that Potsdell brandy. Is um, it? The yeah, and it's for us. It's been it's been a a, a little jewel in our little box. That's been oh pretty god, much it's one of the best kept secrets in the world. I, I agree. It's a it's a stunning product, and uh, <laughs> I think finally finally with um, focus and energy, and we've brought in a fantastic guy to assist us with. The blending, because at the end of the day, this is like a like a malt whiskey from Scotland, where they they mm. take different casts and they bring them together and harmonise them and create something that's really extraordinary. So the who's base making spirit, who's making your brandy, Carly? So Stuart Witter is oh, our wine maker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he does the distillation. So we do a, a double distillation. We've got a beautiful alambic prulu pot still from oh. cognac, and uh, it's a it's an some object of desirability and art. It's absolutely mm. amazing. And of course, and, the um, packaging for that. Oh, God, the packaging for that brandy. Who chose that bottle? You, because you are the sort of, you no, are no, the you sort of it. doyen of class. Thank you. It was very kind of you. No, but uh, look, I've been at Takara five uh, very short years. Um, I'm hoping that the years last a lot longer. But um, whenever we get down to the, the choosing of something that's going to be around with us for a long time, we get the Ferreira family involved. And GT specifically has very strong ideas on, on what he wants in terms of aesthetics. Mm. So our brandy bottle was without a doubt chosen by him. He oh, looked at the whole beautiful. range of different decanters and said, how classic and how timeless is that? And I think it speaks volumes of not only the architecture that he used to design the winery, but of his choices um, of all the interiors as well. It's, well, you know, really I'm very, fun. I'm a very but, tactile person. I love feeling, even from a little girl, my sister will tell you, and my mother, if she was still alive, we used to walk through the shops and I used to say, oh, mommy, feel this. Oh, Ali, feel that. I just love feeling things. I love texture. And that bottle, it sounds absolutely bizarre, but if you hold that bottle in your hands, it feels, it feels classy and it feels smooth and soft and elegant and beautiful, which is exactly what's inside that bottle as well. You've managed to just get the outside and the inside top, top, top drawer. It's a beautiful yeah. product. It, it matches now, and, and the nice thing, I think, for us is it's also a very proudly South African product because it contains only Chenin Blanc, so yes. it's spirits distilled from Chenin Blanc, from a vineyard on the property that was planted specifically for that product. So, so it's completely bespoke, yeah. Yep, 
And the oldest spirits that we have in the cellar are now 21 years old because Takar has been around for that long and has been distilling um, the Shannon into, into spirits for that length of time. So the blend that's now in the EXO bottle is an average age of about 16 and a half years, which wow. is extraordinary. And it's it just going to get better and more complex. And please tell me that you're not going to say we've only got 25 bottles left in the cellar. No. So I'll tell you, um, it's not a secret. It's part of our um, bespoke range. So it's a smaller volume of production because yes. it is a labor of love. Um, yeah. You start out with 20,000 liters of uh, base wine. And you, you end, end up, up with, with three a, bottles. <laughs> a tiny, tiny volume of spirits at the end of the day. Yeah. And then you use these different combinations of spirits. So for the first, because we started out with a five-year, went on to 10-year, went yeah. on to, um, uh, and then eventually on to an exo. And uh, so we have base spirits to to plan and work around and, and, and build up the volume. So we do about 3,500 bottles. So it's not a lot. It's um, not a lot. And what do you age it in? What oak are you aging it in? <laughs> um, maybe I'm, I'm not supposed to. Okay, don't tell. Um, if it's a funny. secret, don't but, tell. No, 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 it's not a secret. No, it's just very, very funny because somebody um, wrote me a letter and said, um, so what sort of limousine do you <laughs> age your do you age your brandy in? And um, without the it's not the vehicle. Um, it's a barrel. It's an oak type from a forest in France called Limousine. And um, it's an exceptional wood that um, just has always partnered with con cognac throughout the centuries. Yes. And uh, we use those barrels and um, as new oak. And we buy one a year because we don't like to over-influence the spirits with oak. And the rest of the barrels are 30, 40-year-old barrels um, oh. that we bought in from other brandy um, companies to be able to utilize for neutralizing the spirit profile over time. So the essence that's in that bottle comes straight from the grapes, from the vineyard. Oh, and I'm sure that you've, that you've now got all kinds of back vintages. So the blending must be absolutely gorgeous. And I interrupted you earlier. I cut you short when you were saying you've got somebody in to come and help you do the blending. Who's that? Oh, no. Now you mm. – I'll have to, you now no, the coffee has taken away my memory, and I'm getting what's old. In that, what's and by in the that way, I'm six foot eight, it's very difficult to cut me short. <laughs> <laughs> what is in that coffee? I bet you've got a splash of EXO in that coffee, which is why you can't remember. Brandy, my, my, and you make me blush now as well, which is not good. <laughs> and we're recording this. Um. <laughs> this is going on YouTube, so you must know everybody is going to watch. Everybody yeah, is going to. It's going to be around forever, hmm? which is cool. It is around forever. Unfortunately, there's this new thing called, I, I can't get used to it. You know, for people my generation, Jonathan, my son, just kills himself laughing at me. I don't think I'm that bad. I mean, I do still write with a fountain pen. I know that. But I've yeah. managed to sort of maneuver my way around a laptop. I can use an iPhone. I can watch Netflix. I can semi-understand how there's dual view on my televisions. Oh, wow. I can sort You're of, more advanced than I am. You <laughs> see, you see, I'm not that bad. But if something were to go wrong right here and now with you and me on this YouTube and this Riverside thing and what have you, if I didn't have Dudu, the sound engineer, I would honestly be dead in the water. Would you? Would you know what to do? I must tell you that I'm very impressed with you because you sent me an email from Carrie at CarrieAdams.co.za. So you I have an domain please. It's my own. Very impressive. <laughs> That's terribly impressive, I thought. So Did Carly you know talk started... mm. Mm? Sorry, I just wanted to say when we started Takara, it's quite a nice little story. When we started Takara years ago, okay, this was uh, um uh, uh, was a little gem of uh, an idea that the Ferreras had in, in uh, nineteen ninety four when they bought the property and by two thousand we were established as a winery and started making our first vintages. The first thing that needed to happen was to go and register www.takara.com, which we did, and then to try and find access to social media handles. And we yes. couldn't get at Takara um, for really? Twitter because it's owned by um, somebody from the Takara Islands in a small little archipelago off the Japanese coast. Where the oh, I've never heard of that in my life before. So 
We thought it was a made-up name, but it happens to be quite famous in Japan. Well, I was just about to say, GT, we have to sort of, we'll raise our coffees to GT because he really has been quite remarkable about the way he has quietly, steadfastly, under the radar, headed towards excellence with Takara. He was a banker in South South Africa. That's my COVID brain, Carl. Everything has gone to hell with this COVID brain. I can't tell you. You're going to have to pull me up every now and again. He was a banker in Johannesburg. He went down to the Cape. He bought this beautiful little piece of heaven over the road or next door to Giles Webb, I think, at Salima, um, up on that hill, which surely has some of the most breathtaking views of the Western Cape, which in itself on a good day is the prettiest place in the world. He he planted vineyard because there was nothing there, was there? Or was there vineyard on that farm? Uh, there was. It was a roll-on lawn farm, so it was a turf farm. Okay. Uh, that supplied Roland Long to the wealthy suburbs of Stellenbosch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he planted, and I think with the help of, of Giles, again, who's the next door neighbor, who we love and adore Giles Webb. He's a naughty so, ex-Michael House boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Anyway. Giles, Giles said some wonderful stuff. He actually said to GT, listen, um, the land that you've got here, you are doing yourself and the industry a disservice if you don't plant grapes. I remember This that. is a place that can produce some of the most iconic wines going forward. And I remember, Kerry, when I was at university, and that's also a long time ago, 20-odd years ago, <laughs> sitting there with uh, Professor Eben Archer and David Simon, a soil scientist, mm-hmm. and I remember asking them quite clearly a question. It's usually, you know, one of those simple questions that a student asks because you ask them to define and take it to uh, a, the smallest true Point. nugget. Yes. Where is the best land to plant grapes in the Western Cape? <laughs> and you know what the answer was? The mid slopes of the Siemensberg. Of course it was. And the reason the they did that was because in those days you could actually say that. If you said yep. that now, you would be offending the guy who was on the slightly mid-west slope or the guy who was on the slightly mid-south slope. or You just <laughs> used to be able to say it like it was, and it is. Right slap bang, dead center, G spot. It really is the G spot, isn't it? When it comes to it to it's planting, ex- it's an exceptional, exceptional place. I mean, you have a look at the history that Felima has in terms of Cabernet Sauvignon, yeah. in terms of Chardonnay Sauvignons. They've been producing iconic wines for for forever. Yeah. Um, and Giles spearheaded this idea of Cabernet as this luxury product. It's it's quite amazing, and they finally come to fruition with a wine called Rabelais, which just blows my mind. No, it's you know, the other weird. day, you obviously haven't been watching my podcast because the other day okay. I interviewed Tom Tom and ah. we were speaking because Rabelais happens to be one of my favorite wines. I love the whole it's... story of it. But when you put that wine in your mouth, you know that you are in the realm of angels and, and gods. It is absolutely spectacular, that Rabelais, and I love it. And that's right yeah. next door to you. It's right next door. And then, obviously, di- directly across the road, we have Dale Graaf. And then mm. they've got the Lawrence Graaf Reserve. That just, I mean, yeah, you don't have enough words to be able to describe how fantastic Well, that you is. don't have enough money to be able to buy a bottle, so you're never going to be able to describe it. But it is absolutely gorgeous. I do yeah. second that. So, Carl. We're, we're, in, we're in good company. You're a fantastic company, and we salute all of you most of which GT, who I really do think an unwilling farmer at the outset, um, who has been shoved and pushed and finessed and managed by the likes of yourself into into this triumphant, victorious space that you now, it, you really are one of the first growths, may we say so, of South Africa. The wine is beautiful. Tell my Thank listeners you. about mm. that, the ultimate, the ultimate, Takara that comes wrapped in satin. Uh, so, yeah, that was a, it was a project that started, um, you will remember fondly, Harry Wagner, mm. um, who was I the general with him manager. At Anglo. Yeah, hell of a nice guy. Yeah, he, I mean, he was instrumental in setting up the vineyards at Fachelieten, another yep. iconic property. Yes. And, and look at them, how they have come back. They're now winery of the year. It just gives you goosebumps. It's really yeah. amazing. 
Yeah. So Harry Wagner was general manager to Cairo for, for a while until sadly he became ill and he passed away. And one of his projects that he started here was, come on guys, surely after 15 years of producing wines, the vineyards are old enough, we should be able to produce something that is so iconic that it gives a little bit back in terms of recognition to the family that has put so much into this project. And it started as a little seed then. And then when I came on board, we said, okay, guys, we really need to continue with this. And uh, GT chose the bottle again. Um, we sat down with them and went through the packaging. And you know what? I wanted to call it GT. Um, because I think if you're going to do something that's going to show respect back to the people who've really invested the time, money, and, and perseverance into this project, there needs to be some sort of recognition. He's he just too shy. Thing. He wouldn't let that happen, no, though, would he? The He's first too time modest. Ever heard him saying, yeah, exactly. So he said, under no circumstances. <laughs> so then we had to go back to the drawing board. And um, I looked for my English teacher, Mrs. Plummer, would be very proud of me because oh. alliteration, she loved alliteration. Yes. So I said, right, we need, if Takara is a three-syllable word, I need a two-syllable word starting with T. So I Googled unusual name starting with T, <laughs> two syllables. <laughs> and I went through, I trawled through pages after pages after pages and came across an incredible little word called telos. And telos is a Greek word which means the end result of a goal-driven project. Is that really what it means? Yeah, it's, it's the Aristotelian final chapter. It's, it's the culmination of everything that has gone in before, which has resulted in this thing, this telos. Wow. And um, we went, oh, my goodness, Takara telos. It just flows off the tongue. It's two syllables. It starts with a T. And it's, yeah, it's Tataya. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that's how Takara Telos was born. And then, of course, the wine. The wine had to be there beforehand. And the wine is a is an extrapolation of a the very best block of Cabernet on the farm, on the best soil, with the best rootstock, with the best um, uh, top material, and virus free, into the best barrels, aged, played with in tiny little tanks, so that we could really give it all the attention it deserved. And when we tasted this wine, um, everybody just went. It's time. It was a 2015 vintage, best vintage in South Africa in 30 years. I mean, yep. all the stars aligned. It just fell uh, into it place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no, really cool. there's no, um, every, every time is a time for tea loss in my estimation. I can remember you phoning me. Well, it is. It's about seven years ago, six years ago. And you said to me, keep this day open in your diary because we are coming to Johannesburg. And for the first time, Mr. Ferreira came to Johannesburg with you and actually hosted a tasting to present his his baby, his beautiful, beautiful baby that had come of age. Yeah. And for everybody listening, stroke watching, we did it at the Saxon Hotel. And, of course, everything there is always so beautiful. And you had... A whole lot of first growths, first and second growths from France, from Bordeaux. All 100 pointers. All 100 pointer wines from the seat of excellence in the world that produces the ultimate. And then there was a tea loss standing alongside all this excellence. And none of us had ever tasted it before. And I had no idea what to expect. Well... Had we been doing that tasting blind, and I know that you can tell us an interesting story about that, but had we been doing that tasting blind that day, I'm 100% certain that it would have been the top, top wine on, in the lineup. And that's not to be demeaning of any of the other wines that were there, but the purity of fruit, the clarity, the lightness, the translucence, the absolute beauty of that wine. It has to be one of the top, top, top wines in the world. I just honestly no. do believe that when I say that. I really no, have we... not tasted anything that perfect. Give us a little bit more of a story because it's such a magnificent story and not many people know about tea loss. You did those so, kind of tastings um, in England, didn't you? We did. We launched it in London um, at a, a wonderful, wonderful um, 
wine club um, just next to Kensington Palace, um, 67 Pall Mall. Um, it's incredible. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful Everybody wants that address, yeah. Yeah, we can see Prince Charles' office from Wine. <laughs> and we, we had it with um, six different um, top 100-pointer auto wines. Um, outstanding, outstanding wines, and we had the likes of Stephen Spurrier there. Sadly, oh, who's, who's part bless of his place. heart. I was going to say. We had Matkin, we had Greg Sherwood, we had all the real who's who in the zoo. Um, Jancis unfortunately couldn't make it, but her two IC was there. And, She's uh, good enough. We went through, yeah, yeah. So we went through um, the whole tasting. At the end of the tasting, I'll never forget. The Stephen Spurrier stood up and he said, "Look, um, there are." There are wonderful wines in the mix here. He says, they are all without fault, he says. They're all good, he says, but there's only one flawless wine here. And I went, mm. oh, crikey, here it is, the Mouton Rochefield. Yes, the, Lafitte. <laughs> and he says, without a shadow of a doubt, the Telos is the only flawless wine. Oh, and that yeah. was, I get goosefish when I hear well, that story. Yeah. Oh, it's but lovely. Stephen Spurrier it, is not to be sneezed at or was not, no. still isn't. He's, he's passed on by now, but he's, he honestly was one of my heroes of the wine industry. And from, from his mouth, that is, that is true, true, true um, respect from somebody who knows. Well, remember, he's, he did that, um, that tasting where he pitted uh, Californian wines against Burgundy. Yes. Um, the Judgment of Paris. There's a movie made about it. And he pitted for the first time new world against old world and got the French sommeliers to sit down. And at the end of the day, the French sommeliers chose the Californian wines as the best wines in a blind tasting and were horrified by what they had <laughs> achieved. But that's what brought California and new world into people's um, notions and minds and ideas about where wine could be made and, and where one should be. I know. For and I've, I've had to publicly apologize, really, because I studied in England. And um, my wine things in England. And in those days, I mean, it was sort of before the arc, really. But the wine that was coming out of California was not to my taste. And I was really quite rude about it. I think they were a bit clumsy and they were a bit sort of braggart, you know. They really were. And in recent years, I quietly, without not, uh, sort of admitting to anybody, I bring some of my own wine in from America because there are some wines that are coming out of Napa that you honestly can't believe how beautiful they are. They really, really have done their stuff in Napa, haven't they? They crafted. I see Wine Spectator's top wine of the year um, for 2021 is the Dominus Cabernet Sauvignon from oh, Napa. Oh, is it? Christian this wine, yeah. And I've I got some... One I've got some dominus oh, in my cellar, but I think I'm going to sell it to to keep myself going in my old age at this stage of the game. If it's been if it's been rated, they were expensive to start with. Can you imagine what they're going to be now? One bottle will keep you going for a decade. Yeah, I think so. On that note, Telos is about two thousand. How, how much is Telos? Uh, it's four thousand four hundred rand a bottle. Okay. Uh, we only well, produce, so if you say it quickly, uh, it's not so bad. No, there's there's a couple of zeros there. It's four thousand four hundred in a bottle. It's in a bespoke wooden, beautiful piano wood box with a stunning inlay. Look, it's all about presenting the way we want to present our um, gem, our jewel to people. So the the box is one of those things that we want people to enjoy our treasure that we give to you. And then once you've used the bottle and enjoyed that wine, the box becomes something special to keep your own treasures in because it's lined with um, suede. But it's um, beautiful. It just, you can turn it into a jewelry box, can't you? I mean, it's exactly. just the most beautiful presentation. So it's a, most people, you drink a bottle of wine, you throw the bottle away, and there's no remembrance. But with a, when you've had a bottle of Tilos, there's this association of the packaging that comes with it that remains with you, hopefully, forever. Because it is, well, you also I defy anybody not to feel a pang of massive guilt if they threw that box away. Sure. They simply could not throw that box away. You might auction sure. it off to your neighbors, I don't know, but you, you certainly wouldn't throw it away. Carl, Remember you there's used... only 1,000 bottles produced of Tilos. 
a 1, year. 1,000. All numbered. Yep. No, I want That's one. I, as I'm sitting here now in my studio, I want nothing more than a glass of tea loss in front of me. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? It's a bit of an overcast sort of mizzy day in Johannesburg, and I just think that might make life worth living. Carl, you used to make pinotage. I don't think you make it anymore, do you? Yeah, we do. Do you? So, um, yeah, so GT is quite a patriot, obviously. Yes. And uh, one of the things he said without um, any um, worry was we have to have a small vineyard of pinotage. It's essential that Takara offers a pinotage. It doesn't have to be part of a mainstream range, but he wants to be able to have something really authentically South African within the range. So we have a small one hectare block of pinotage, and we produce probably about 1,800 bottles a year. It's only sold from the seller, but it has such a following that within three months of release, it's generally well, that's sold That's why I out. asked, because I remember tasting a bottle of, of, the, of um, Takara pinotage, and that's another one of my apology, apologetic moments. I've had to apologize to pinotage, but yours was delicious. It was absolutely beautiful, and I haven't seen it, and I haven't heard about it, and nobody talks about it. So it's obviously just one of those best-kept secrets again. It's a, yeah, it's a little, it's got a little, its own little cult following. And uh, the guys who buy it um, come back and they, they constantly pepper us with emails. When's the new one being released? When's the new one being released? Oh, well, and it's made in a very, you know, the rest of our wines are restrained and elegant and they've got these supple tannins where the Pinotage, we make it in a very bold, oh, no, new it's, world. It's Gorgeous. It's, it's, it's voluptuous. It's sort of yeah. Marilyn Monroe-ish. It's absolutely beautiful. We loved it. So that's the Pinotage. Or Demis Roussos. Sorry? Or Demis Roussos. Or Demis Roussos. You always need to give a male, <laughs> male equivalent. Yeah. But you couldn't <laughs> see his curves under his caftan. With Marilyn, you could. You could see. And with the Pinotage, you can feel and taste those curves in your mouth. Tell me, um, you bought... A property in Elgin. Yes. And I don't know about 2000. When did you do that? 2006 ish, I think. I think 2004. Um, yeah. We had been making the wines for the neighbors. We had been making the wines for um, Iona. And we knew of the exquisite nature of those grapes. Yeah. So the first couple of vintages of Iona were, were made by um, our winemaker here at Takara. And then we were offered an opportunity by um, Andrew Gunn, who's the owner of Iona, yes. uh, to purchase a piece of property. And there wasn't even a hesitation. We needed to look at cold or cool climate fruit for Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. And without a doubt, it's the, the finest it is the finest. I was going to ask you about it because I, you know, Andrew's a really, really good friend of mine. And I will speak to you about this in private over a bottle of tea loss at some stage. But um, Alec Hogg asked me to put together the makings of a little wine club for Biz News. And Andrew Gunn was the first person that I went to speak to because he, I was the first person he came to speak to when he was selling wine. So we just, we just those kind of friends. And I have to say that on tasting, on retasting the wines of Elgin um, and everything that Andrew's making, and then, of course, I also went to a Thelema tasting recently. I'm rambling now, but they also have wine from, from Elgin. Yeah. They are just unbelievably pure and clean and bright and crisp. They're exactly what they need to be. And I like to romantically think that it's got something to do with the apples in the soil, but I don't think it has. Hmm? So let me let me tell you one thing, um, which I think brings together all those stories. The Sauvignon Blanc from Elgin, we always knew, especially from the Highlands vineyards, where yeah. Iona and the Takara vineyards are situated. It's 500 meters above sea level, but it's five kilometers from the coastline. So yeah. it sits on a plateau. So you get these wonderful diurnal differences between day and night temperature, which is fantastic for fruit development. It's so good that in 2020, the Elgin Reserve Sauvignon Blanc from Takara was awarded the best Sauvignon Blanc in the world at the Sauvignon du Monde competition against the entire world. There were 780 examples of Sauvignon submitted from all over the world. It won the overall trophy for the best Sauvignon. And that's the was one that, that in... also got five stars. Okay. Was that in Brussels it got there? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. no, that's a that's a super heavyweight competition. Yeah, so it's it's wonderful. It's wonderful to get the recognition that you know you always think, hang on, this is great, but you need other people to also tell you that you can't just be. Yeah. Um, those that arrogant. Well, every mother says, thinks her child is gifted. You know, every mother thinks her children are gifted and pretty, but they're not really. We're not all pretty, and we're certainly not all gifted. So, we like to think of our vineyard. <laughs> My poor mother. My mother would be horrified. She told me always that I had a fabulous face for radio, and now <laughs> Alec Hogg is making me do this YouTube thing. It's it's blown it all out of the water. <laughs> Ah, it's good. It's good. Um, it immortalized you. Oh, my God. So, Carl, where to from here with, with Takara? I mean, it's just so exciting to have been given this recognition for excellence because your wines are excellent. Where to from here? Are there big things to expect from you? It's it's an interesting game, you know, because we're at we're at the the pointy end of the stick, I suppose. And And do we redefine what we're doing? Do we change course somewhat? Do we um, accept that climate change is going to affect uh, variety choice coming going forward? Or do we do what we... So I sound a little bit like Frank Sinatra. Do we do what we... <laughs> I was about to start singing. So what, what our plans are going forward is obviously more of the... Sounds so boring, more of the same. But every single iteration, so every single vintage that we go through, we are able to fine tune the process better, more mm. intelligently, and with um, a greater uh, outcome at each point. So the where we start with everything is with our viticulturalist, who's been with us thankfully for twenty years. Um, An amazing. Yeah. And Aidan Morton, he's just a, no, a he's genius. Gorgeous. He is yeah. a genius. And he makes sure that all of our vineyards are virus free, and that's where. Everything starts. The rest is God given. We have yeah. these incredible soils and an incredible slope with an incredible family that has given us all the resources that one could ever want to make wonderful wines. Mm. So it's up to us now to just keep on amping it up. And GT's one of his favorite sayings is he says, It's all about raising the bar. <laughs> and that's what we do. Every single year we raise the bar for well, our own expectations. Yeah, no, you do. And I think, Carl. Um, you have a dream team. GT has put a dream team in place. There's you, there's Aiden. Your winemaker is off the charts. He's just brilliant. Yeah. I mean, you work all very well together. Um, and for anybody who hasn't been to Takara, sorry for you. It really is one of the most beautiful, beautiful places. And in all my years, in retail, I very seldom have picked up the telephone and said to anybody, please may I make a booking for one of my special customers to come and have lunch or dinner or whatever. But I do do it with Carl because Carl, just he's also modest. It rubs off GT and it rubs the whole way down into the bottom story of the cellar. They're all modest and they're all humble. But you are an amazing operator, Carl. You have put together, you know, all the – I think all the goodies were in the toilet bag and GT employed you and you pulled the drawstring and the toilet bag is now complete. So when you're going on holiday, you throw everything in and if you don't pull that drawstring, they all end up all over your suitcase. You have pulled the drawstring on that toilet bag and Takara is definitely one of our top, top, top shooting the lights out producers. The restaurant is breathtaking. The views are just indescribable. The food, yeah. the wine, it's an amazing experience. So if we're not locked down for December, and if you are in the Cape, I know, please, yeah. goodness, from my lips to God's ears, but if you're in the Cape, I'm assuming that the restaurant and the, and the winery is open. Restaurants open, wineries open, and most importantly, because – we, we like to supply you with vices. So alcohol and beautiful <laughs> wines is what we do really well. But Rubbish, we be honest, you, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's really what you wanted to say. No, we've got olive oil as well, so we can make <laughs> you feel like I said rock and roll, not you. olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> so Mrs. Ferreira's passion project is obviously the Tuscan olive varieties that she planted mm. 20 years ago. We are now, oh, oh, man, those trees are just bearing the most incredible fruit. 
Oh. Plump, ripe, delicious, and the oils are next level. So there's a whole combination. Takara has become, over time, not just a producer of great wine, great food, and beautiful art, but it's become a destination. And you can spend a couple of hours here and while away the time and go, wow, you know, immerse yourself in somebody else's paradise, which is no, really it is. quite... It's that big tapestry. It's all just coming together. It's the design of Takara and the tapestry is all coming together. Carl, I'm so proud of you. I've known you for a long time. I, I could almost have changed your nappies. And I've just watched you just get, I was going to say bigger and bigger, but that might be offensive because he is six foot. How much are you? Six foot eight. Six eight. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, very anyway. cool. Do you remember where we first met, by the way? Oh, my God. Can we tell that on air? On the front steps of the Park Hyatt Hotel, when I came up to taste for Julia Cullinan's wine festival. That's quite right. That's in 2000. That is a long <laughs> time ago. <laughs> it is a long time ago. Well, you have just honestly done so well. And all of you at Takara, congratulations from the whole Biz News team. We Thank are so lucky much. to have people like you in our midst. We really, really are. So congratulations to all of you. When are you coming to Johannesburg? Actually, in the first week of, no, the second week of January. So okay, I'm well, looking forward to seeing Shay Adams. Yeah. Shay Adams is always open for you. You know that. So That's a very good idea. Yeah, give me absolutely. a shot. And let me tell you, Alec Hogg is very lucky to have you on board. Oh, I love him too. We've got, we've got a... Lucky. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe he'll stop paying me a salary one of these days. You never know if he has too many of those. Carl, thank you, my darling. Lots of love to all of you and congratulations. Your wine is out of this world. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Cheers.